Today I am teaching you how to do budget headshots alone in a messy space with a Godox V1 and no softbox or modifier. Then everything goes wrong. Nah, I'm kidding. We just edit the photos at the end. Taylor Jackson shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. Welcome to our home here in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. I am joined by Richard the Bulldog here on the couch. And it occurred to me this morning that I am a professional photographer and I have been for quite some time, yet I do not have a professional headshot. So we're gonna walk through the process today. I'm gonna do my best to take a good one. Um, I'm here all alone, so this is a bit of a budget challenge. One, because I don't have a modifier of any sort. I'm just gonna bounce off the wall or off a door, I think, maybe. Uh, and then also, I just I don't have anyone to hold the camera for me because Lindsay is unfortunately out of town today. So I got one light, I have my Godox V1 over here. And I'm probably just gonna be bouncing it off of this door. I kind of looked around the room and around the room, all the light is very good. Over here is very good, but the background's a little messy. Uh, I found that right about here, if I'm standing right here, that the background should be out of focus enough that it will be easy to just kind of cut myself out or use it as an environmental shot if I so choose. The other thing, I have one light. I'm gonna be using this door essentially as my main light, uh, but I also kind of have that backlight from up over here. Uh, just naturally occurring in the scene. So I would much rather just come into a space and be able to bring one single light into it, into a space that already kind of works and get a better photo and improve the scene with one flash than to come in with a big octo box over here and something uh, that's on a grid in the back to get that nice, that nice hair light. Um, if you are doing this professionally and you're doing a bunch of corporate photos, you're at a lawyer's office or what else have I done? A car dealership and you need like 15, 20 photos that all look exactly the same. In that case, it makes sense to bring in lights and not to just kind of do it like this. But when you need one, one single image, a one-off image, it's kind of the, the best and easiest to make it happen this way. Another weird and interesting thing I'll mention is that uh, if you are hired as a professional photographer, you're kind of expected to put on a little bit of a show now. So you can't just show up to a commercial gig and just and, and do it this way. Bit of an appearances thing that you gotta bring in lights, you gotta bring in sandbags, I don't know. I, I'd prefer to do it this way. This is CTO gel, this is not going on my flash, this is on my flash from a wedding. Let's get into the headshots here with Richard the Bulldog. All right, so with me I have the 35 millimeter lens for Nikon, as well as the Godox X-Pro adapter that I finally, there's been a lot of comments that I left the quality control sticker on for way too long. So it's finally, finally off of there. This is gonna go on a tripod and I'm gonna put it sideways this way. So I'm able to take the, take the photo that way. If you know that you're gonna be cutting this photo out and you're not gonna want it in the environment, um, the hardest part is usually hair. So if you can get just even a green piece of Bristol board to just put up behind somebody's head, it makes hair a lot easier to cut out, but we're gonna go through a few ways at the end of this video on how you can actually uh, not even do anything and just, just let Photoshop do the entire thing. All right, turning turning on this controller here, set to one slash eighth power, or I guess plus 0 0.03. Um, and I'm gonna be shooting maybe, we'll start at F2.8 at 200th of a second and ISO 400. Camera is gonna go up here and I'm gonna stand out there. I'm gonna put some shoes on and I'm gonna do some of my best poses. This is an Nikon D780, as you can see right here. And I am specifically excited for this to be my main camera this year because it makes my video a little bit easier. I do both photography and video, usually at weddings. And uh, it makes autofocus actually possible in Nikon cameras, which hasn't been a thing in quite a while. The reason that I love Nikon cameras specifically for video though is because the buffers are very fast. So if you're doing both photo and video coverage at the same time that you can take a lot of photos really quickly and then you can switch to video mode, and start recording. So huge fan of that. I would say the D5 was the first major, major, major improvement uh, for that. And then the D850 and then this, I would say the buffer is a little bit slower because it uses SD cards, but overall it's a better user experience and more of my shots are gonna be in focus because I can actually rely on autofocus in this camera. Let's get back to the topic at hand. So I've just set up my softbox right here. It's very lovely. I would, I would say that this is probably I'm about six feet. So I would say this is probably an eight foot softbox. Plus you're getting some unique and interesting shaping that you can't recreate with modifiers like this lamp. It's gonna bounce some stuff and this, this is gonna maybe kick back a little bit of uh, backlight if I stand right essentially where 
this flash tick is here. All right, I fear if I'm standing where the flash is, I'm gonna be too far away and I don't really wanna move all the couch and everything. So we're gonna do a few test frames where I'm gonna stand kind of directly in front of the camera here, away from the water cooler. And then I think we might even try a few down this back hallway and I'm gonna use this as a complete main light and only use this as a direct backlight because there's no windows out around that corner. All right, now what I wanna do, um, I'll put you guys sideways here. I'm gonna go into menu, I'm going to go into here and find interval timer. So it turns out interval timer, you can't actually use autofocus. So I'm gonna have to set up a flag. I'm sure you've probably seen the news reporters do it if you ever see them out in the field and they're, they're self-filming that they'll set up a light stand and they'll come and they'll kick it over uh, and then they'll stand exactly where it was so that they know they're in focus. So I guess that's what I have to do. I went online and I tried to see if the Canon R, which is what I'm filming this on, if this could do interval timer and apparently it doesn't do interval timer, which is unfortunate. So I can do one single self timer, but I gotta make sure that photo's perfect and that's a lot of back and forth, but it will autofocus. And then I tried the Fuji and the Fuji X100V, which does autofocus and interval timer, so everything is in focus, but it wouldn't use my Nikon X-Pro controller uh, to control the flash. So I have my choice of using Fuji, getting everything in focus, interval timer, like 100 frames, uh, but not using off-camera flash or using off-camera flash and making the light a little bit better, a little bit more professional, three-dimensional and setting up a bit of a stick to make sure that I'm actually in focus. So let's, uh, let's go find a mic stand or something and uh, set it up probably right here. This is me. Uh, this is why I'm a photographer and not an artist. My skills stopped in second, maybe first grade. I'm gonna tape it right here. Tape skills also remain in second grade. All right, so there I am. Now all I have to do is stand here, and I might go down to F4 just so I have a little more depth of field. Uh, again, it would be a lot easier if Richard could take photos or, or Lindsay could take photos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn autofocus off with the front little nub there. Make sure it's in focus, which it is right now. And then I'm gonna set up interval timer. And we're gonna see if interval timer will also activate the flash. I'm not sure of so solving problems today here on my budget headshot tutorial I also have a podcast in like four minutes so gotta gotta get this done does it activate the flash oh it does success all right so now we're gonna have a hundred photos of this guy's face I'm just gonna stand here for a little test frame make sure I'm nice and in focus and I am in focus but I am too hot too bright. So I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go down to F4 here. So going down to F4, same situation out here. Gonna put some shoes on so my shoes are in the shot and I can Photoshop myself anywhere I want. And we're gonna get to post production after I do a podcast with Way Up North. And then we'll get to the beauty and magic of post production. All right, here we go. No phones in pockets. Have to stay exactly on this mark here. So right there. my pants. So what you'll notice is that I'm actually leaning in with my head a little bit here so that my, my belly doesn't look so large, that the closest thing to the camera is going to be the largest. So if I can lean in like this and put myself back on that focus point. All right. Hopefully one of those is good. In the editing video, we're going to talk about how to remove backgrounds very easily with one click in Photoshop. I am going to go do an outfit change and put on the, the white sweater that I'm sure you've seen me wear a lot of times. Another important thing is to make sure that your hair isn't too wild because it's a pain to cut it out or if you're gonna do the automated way like I'm gonna teach you, it's just not gonna know exactly where all your hair is. It's gonna do a pretty good job, but if you keep it a little more compact and a little less wild, it'll be a little bit easier. I feel kind of, I feel for whoever does Jared Pole and Frono's photos, um, his cutouts because those would not be easy. And still got three minutes before my podcast. Let's get back to it. Dudes in focus, here we go. Right here. Last time my feet were barely in it, so this time it's probably gonna be the same, actually. 
So what we call a hard pose. You're supposed to keep your heels flat on the floor, but I can't do that. Also, I hope you've been enjoying our treadmill on the side of the frame, because I kind of moved everything around uh, to give myself this space, even though the bottles are still here. There's a lot going on. Now we're gonna move into the actual proper, just kind of headshot headshots. So I've adjusted this flash so it hits from a little bit higher. A good light would probably come down from kind of this direction, so I'm gonna kind of point it like this. And for the most part, this light is all gonna come back down nicely on me. This is my stand-in, his name is Steve. And uh, this is what's going on over here. Richard's still chilling on the couch. I'm gonna stand here with Steve and have my headshot taken. And then coming up next, no, I'm kidding, there's nothing. It's only, we're only doing portraits. All right, so back here, interval timer. Make sure Steve's in focus, live view. Steve, are you in focus? Apparently that takes a photo now. Even if it's out of focus, it takes a photo. All right, so Steve is in focus. Moving to manual focus mode and Interval, start. Here we go. Moving Steve. I guess I gotta get rid of you, sorry. Wow, it's always been my dream to visit Peru. Now I have, thanks to this tutorial. Thank you, Taylor. One more variation, as you can see, the light on my face is very good. It is because I'm just looking into a window. If you ever need to do a video conference or you need to do a Skype call with good light, just put your laptop right here and light is gonna be pretty good. It might just be flat and kind of uneven, but it's good quality of light overall. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put myself maybe right about here so I don't have to squint. And I'm gonna actually use the Godox V1 as my backlight so it actually gives a lot more three-dimensionality to the image. Uh, let's, uh, let's try that on. So I'm gonna stand right here where the weird ground TV is and I'm gonna have my flash over here and this is gonna hit me right in the back of the head. We'll put Steve up as the, as the guy. So I'm gonna be facing over here, approximately right there. I'm going to put the camera out in front of me. And I'm gonna put it up to head level. Snake so on D780, pointed here. That's Steve, who's looking, who's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to use the Godox over here. And I'm gonna bring it, actually I'm gonna leave it right about there because that's kind of the height that I need to that. Or I guess it goes down. These things are very inexpensive, but also, as you just saw, not the best quality. Basically, I want this light to be pointed right kind of at my head. And I'm actually gonna zoom it in a little bit. I don't know if I do that on here. So what you do back here is you hit the top button, which is zoom. And then I'm gonna go to 50, because I feel like if it's 28, it's gonna very much get into the lens. And I don't really wanna put any sort of like grid here so that it doesn't bleed into my actual camera lens. And I feel like that will hit me right here nicely in the back of the head. And if that's too strong, then I can either dial it back or I can put a little diffusion gel on it. I think I also might have a grid attachment as well. So maybe, maybe I'll actually start to do this properly. Probably not, no, it's not a spoiler. Thanks, Taylor. Before, I didn't have any real estate clients, but now that I have this cutout of me crossing my arms and looking presentable and approachable, I have many clients in real estate. My bus shelter and bus bench game is also strong now. Thank you. So overall, the light doesn't really have the exact direction that I want. I like that Steve's still up here in the frame. Uh, but I would say it's pretty good and I can massage it in post-production a little bit with some dodging and burning. Much easier for this one-off shot than uh, just massaging the light in person to be exactly what I want it to be. I have the quality, I have the, the volume of light. Uh, it's just making it have a little bit more, a little bit more shape because the way that my beam kind of goes out, I'm set to full wide mode and it's just kind of, bringing back everything. So it's making a nice big soft box, but because of that, it doesn't quite have the depth. I think we did pretty good today. So let's get to editing. Here's the skateboard film finish. You have to put the lens cap actually on because it's so wide that even if I'm almost physically touching the lens, it's uh, still, it's a 15 mil. Who wants to do some editing? Richard wants to do editing. All right, welcome. I've gone through and I've made my selects in Photo Mechanic and I've quickly realized that it's very important that you don't just pull your shirt out of luggage to do headshots. So that's going to require some annoying adjustment, unfortunately. If you don't have a steamer, if you have a, just a, a basic small steamer handheld, uh, usually that's the fastest way for if you do walk up to a headshot session that you can just have it plugged in and if somebody shows up in a shirt that just isn't going to photograph as well as it should, uh, then you just steam them quickly, not with the shirt on their body, hopefully, maybe in a, in a washroom or get them to go do it somewhere, but uh, it definitely makes things a lot easier. Uh, photo mechanic is what I'm in right here. Essentially, all I did was I went through and I selected, um, so I started 
with this many images. And I just kind of went through and made my selects and I ended up with the red ones here. So as you can see, everything is super overexposed. Um, I wasn't seeing the back of my camera while I was taking images, but I am overall pretty happy with the quality of light and everything. Uh, I think that worked out pretty well and the flare was handled really, really fantastically. So I think this'll, this will cut out nicely and add a little bit of something different. Um, I'm gonna walk you through everything that I would do right now. My retouching process is not necessarily as extreme as uh, anyone else's in the world. Maybe I, I'm, maybe I'll time it. I would suspect that I can do a full retouch in under a minute, maybe like 40 seconds. I'm efficiency based usually, and I can make everything kind of the way that I mostly want it. Obviously you can spend an unlimited amount of time making a portrait absolutely perfect, but, um, I just kind of do what I want to get done. And, uh, again, this is, I guess I'm editing myself. So I, I want to make myself look as good as possible. So I'll give, give you all those. Um, all I do, the reason I use photo mechanic is simply to have kind of a second layer of organization. So basically all your folders are down here and like, you're just able to select everything very easily. You can do selects basic like this in Lightroom, no problem, but I just like having a second, uh, second level. So, uh, the import button is underneath where my head is over here. So I'm going to move me. I record my screens in uh, quick time because I'm a professional. And as I mentioned before, everything is good and overexposed. So I'm gonna find something that works the best with my skin tone. I usually edit and base my wedding edit or what wedding preset I actually use based on skin tone. So if this looks the best on me, I kind of think it might. Uh, I'm gonna just make it something like there. And again, I'm only focusing on me, not all this other garbage all around. Cause I'm gonna cut me out and gonna make me go somewhere else. Originally I wanted to do an environmental portrait as well, but I think it'll just be easier this way. So that looks pretty good. Um, all these presets are available. There's a link in the description, or if you want to go over to Patreon, you get all of them. Whereas I think when you buy them, you only get 2018 and 2019. Um, when you join Patreon, you get all of these, including the, the after dark destination presets and everything is usable, I would say overall, pretty much on every uh, commercial simple looks pretty good. I might even go with that. It's very similar to what I had here, but I feel like because we're gonna do retouch, so if this was a wedding day and I was adding this preset to an entire gallery, I would use this one because it will just basically make skin look the most flattering overall, but because we're gonna do more of a full retouch, I'm okay with adding a little bit more contrast because uh, I'm actually going to refine the features that that contrast would make upset. So um, I'm way behind on my minute goal here, but let's let's say a minute once we hit Photoshop. So this is just a basic edit, like the make the image look kind of good. I think I'm happy with something like that. Is it in focus? Look at that, it's in focus. Lighting's pretty good for just bouncing a V1 off a wall. Look at all this crap in the background, definitely not a professional here. Um, there's a previous button that basically just syncs all your previous settings under there. And I think that looks pretty good. Another thing I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that I retain all the data. I don't want to do a final edit like dodge and burn within here because I'm going to be doing skin correction. And then I'm actually going to bring the dodge and burn layer in. So right now I'm just kind of making it look good. Um, another thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go down here and make sure that this preset isn't adding any noise. All my presets add noise because I actually really like the, I guess, tactile or the texture to images. But in this specific case, I don't want grain, so I get rid of that. So if you're stressed about that, that's how you, that's how you get rid of it. I felt that I was a little bit too close to my light here. Um, I'm gonna try to, so whenever I'm brightening spaces up, I bring the contrast down and the shadows up and I make sure everything is all reset other than that. So this is kind of the way that I brighten things up. It hides a little bit better, I find. That's all right. We'll see if that ends up being a thing. I feel like the shadows, because the light comes in at too direct, it's just like right there. It looks like a very lit shot, which I guess you can get away with in headshots, but um, I usually would not. So I'm gonna click back here to use the settings that I used in this, to use previous. This is the real estate photo. If you're ever a real estate agent, you need to have this photo. And I think that looks pretty good. That might even be the best one. I feel like my shoulder is unnaturally larger than it usually is, so I might push that back in a little bit in post, but I'm pretty happy overall with it. This is the pirate um, reset. 
uh, pirate life. And again, I want to make sure that's a little too blown for me. And you can kind of see up here in the histogram that if this goes pure white, you're too far, but also that takes into account everything in the frame. So the pure whites right now are probably happening out here. Um, the preset also retains a little bit of kind of gray in the highlight. So even if you overexpose and you go to pure white, it's never going to look exactly pure white. So the image that I thought was going to look the best, um, one, there's a clock coming out of my head, but that's going to go away. Um, but the lighting that I thought was going to look the best actually doesn't. The perfect window lighting that I usually love um, isn't naturally the most flattering. I would say probably this setup over here is actually the best. Is that even in focus? That one's not even in focus. Oh, yeah, it is. It just took a minute to load. We're good. Um, so I would say that probably that lighting or this lighting straight out of camera is maybe the best. Um, my pizza order is here, so I'm going to have to take a quick break. Sorry. You guys can, um, you can, if you want to listen to the pizza song, um, I can play that right now for you. There's a music video. The, the, the pizza music video began as a big joke between Blair who shot the video and myself and Tim that we wanted to recreate a shot for shot sequence of Lana Del Rey high by the beach where there's like this weird helicopter outside of her beach house. We did it with pizza and a drone and we thought it was super funny, but nobody, I don't think ever got the reference because it was pretty obscure, but here's the video while I go and eat pizza and we will return here in a few moments. I hope you enjoyed that brief interruption. I have now resumed editing. I am actually in a different shirt. So uh, CRA, Canadian Revenue Agency, Canada Revenue Agency, their rules are if you buy a shirt and you use it as a business expense, um, such as this shirt here, um, I am not legally allowed to wear it any other time. So when I'm eating pizza on my couch, I have to change my shirt because I'm not filming. It's not, they're not that strict, but the rules are pretty much that you have to buy a thing, film only in it. You can't wear it any other time and then you're supposed to throw it out this is what they and so i don't know if throwing out if you need to like have physical proof of you putting it in the garbage i'm not gonna put this shirt in the garbage i'm gonna keep this so i don't know i you're not even supposed to donate it it's super weird anyways let's stop talking about the wrinkled shirt and we'll move on so i think overall there is enough data this is kind of a global baseline edit and i am pretty happy with it i am the least happy with that photo right now but i'm retaining as many highlights as i kind of can it's fine. There are better. The real estate agent shot is better. Um, you'll also notice that my skin tone is very red. So we will, um, I don't know. Let's see what the, the V2. Eh. I prefer this since it's well lit. We'll just have to do a little, little more in post-production. Basically, the further you get the light away or the, the further and larger it kind of is that this is a very close light source. So you're getting a lot of reflection. Um, and you're picking up every individual thing because the angle of light isn't so good. Whereas the angle of light here may be, well, technically not considered better, definitely is better and more flattering overall. Um, so as I kind of got closer, that kind of got a little more embarrassing and this is pretty, pretty close. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good kind of straight out of camera preset image. Um, but definitely on a wedding day, I wouldn't be going into this level of retouching that we're about to get to right now. So I think that's fine. I like that little clock hat. It's going to become the new Mickey Mouse ears. Uh, off camera flash, nice little flare. Let's export these. We'll call them me and Steve. Although I didn't include any photos of Steve, so he's going to be upset, but I guess that's okay. Um, I don't really touch anything down here ever. Maybe resolution, make sure it's 300 if you want to print. Um, I'm going to leave it as this. I'm going to go up a little bit just because I know I'm going to be doing a lot. Basically with a raster file like a JPEG, the more times you save it, the more you're degrading the quality of it. So by saving it at at least a higher quality, you kind of get a few more rounds out of it before it starts to degrade too much. Um, that said, I would say current standards of saving uh, JPEG files are fine. This might be internet past like 
history that you're not supposed to resave and resave and resave um, that you'll lose things. But in the to the naked eye, unless you're like saving something that you've screenshotted from Instagram and you're trying to re-upload it as a bigger file, um, you're probably not going to run into too many issues. All right, so we're going to launch Photoshop. I think that one's going to be a good one. I'm happy that my foot just barely got in there because uh, it's wrinkled shirt. I don't want to repair a wrinkled shirt. Let's just use this one. It's easier. I feel like that one, this one's a little bit better. I like the, the standing rather than the straight square. Maybe, maybe I do like the straight square. Let's do the straight square first, and then we'll get to a more complex one. So I'm going to do one vertical, which will be this one right here. And then I will do one horizontal, um, which will be... Let's discover it together right now. Which one is the best? Probably the real estate shot. Pirate shot. Ooh, but which real estate shot? Let's do this real estate shot. It's a real estate shot because my arms are crossed. And then usually the, the other trick for real estate photography is that if you're ever photographing a realtor, their arms have to be crossed and you have to be laying on the ground getting an angle where they look like they're a building. Um, that's not true. So let's begin with this one here. So we're going to start with the vertical version and I'm going to go in here to, this is 200%. So this is above, that's a hundred percent. And I am marginally out of focus only I will see or ever care about that. Uh, and then I'm going to move my, my face maybe up here. And what I do, so if I want to retouch my face, I want to make my face look better. I'm going to do a few things. Number one, I'm going to make a separate layer. So I just drag this layer down onto here. Um, again, this is kind of the quick and dirty version of everything. Um, I have a tablet. I have a Wacom. Um, I'll put the link in the description below, but it's one of the ones that's touch sensitive, so you can use it as a trackpad as well. So using a pen is definitely helpful. What I do is I just kind of grab my under eye bags here <laughs> and I drag to a nicer piece of skin. And while that adjustment on its own is way too heavy, um, what I do is I come back here and I drag this down a little bit so it retains a little bit of that detail. All right, that looks good. Flatten those together, I use Shift Command E to flatten everything or just command E to flatten one layer into the next layer. Um, this, I was just merging it all to the background layer. All right, next I go filter, image, nomic, portraiture, three. And I'm not an affiliate or anything of portraiture, but they make a good product. So basically if I go into like 50%, you can probably see the effects a little better. Um, I don't know if I can turn preview off. I feel like you just get to see it. <laughs> um, I'll do a, before and after afterwards. And basically I come over here to normal smoothing, click okay. And what it did, you can see there a little bit is made the skin just a little bit smoother. So pretty much every detail, it kind of smoothed out in a subtle way. And I feel like it's too, still too a little aggressive, too strong. So I'm gonna come back down here. Um, well, you'll also notice that there is a little bit too much redness still and a little bit too much reflection. So one thing that I actually do, if it's just a one-off is you kind of hit auto color and hope for the best that made it very, not the color that I wanted it to be. Um, and then if that doesn't work, there's a few different options. I think the easiest option here today is finding a skin color that I actually like. That's not a blotchy red, something like maybe right there coming over here to your, uh, what is this? A brush tool opening up a new layer down here so that you're basically just drawing on top of yourself and then deciding where you kind of don't want, um, I've lost my pen. Using a tablet is super helpful here because you can leave it at full, um, but you're kind of touch sensitive. So if you touch something very softly, um, it will just kind of softly affect the area. So something like that kind of happy with. Um, I feel like for blemish removal and whatnot, if this isn't, if this doesn't actually exist all the time in real life, it's fine to remove. Um, you're not supposed to do that on the layer that uh, doesn't actually have that data. So make sure you're on the layer that you're trying to edit from. And something like that looks pretty good. So basically I just cleared up my, my crappy skin and I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. And I'm sure there's other ways you can kind of screen and dodge and burn depending on what 
kind of texture you want in the skin for this. I just want something just nice and boring. So I'm going to do something like that. Bring that down. And I'm pretty happy. Cool. So this looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to do a few more things just to show you all the possible outcomes. I don't use all of these things on every single image. Um, in Liquify, you can actually adjust, like if you want the huge like YouTube eyes that all the weird thumbnails have, you can just like do that. I don't recommend it. But what I do recommend is just doing like a little tiny small adjustment. I don't have a mouse pad and I'm on a gloss surface, so it's kind of a bit challenging. But just making eyeballs a little bit larger uh, makes things a little bit more engaging. Um, and without making it look too weird. Uh, in the closer up image, we'll actually go and we'll do some smoothing or uh, some sharpening, I guess, on actual eyes. Um, if you're uncomfortable with your appearance, you can also just do whatever you want in here. So if you want to look like a weird Wolverine or you want to look like big Wolverine, you can do that. Um, I just undid what I did over here. Okay, that looks good. Um, if you want to take full control, you can just like go like this and you can actually just like move whatever you want. So you want to be 10 pounds skinnier? Do whatever you want, man. Live your life. There you go. You just lost 45 pounds and your face looks completely unnatural. Um, what it is helpful for though, is if you want to get kind of that perfect retouch, that's like magazine or whatever. Um, so I don't think that went too far. It's kind of, eh, whatever. It's fine. I lost 10 pounds. Um, the other way to go about that actually is the way that I do it for weddings. And I actually have this all built into an action. So I load up wherever my final gallery of images is. I go to automate batch and I run everything through this action. But essentially all it does is it moves the image, image size, um, unclicks this and it will actually go to percent and it actually makes the width 98%. So you basically, you just get like a little bit of a squeeze. It doesn't look too unnatural and you can do it across the entire gallery. You screw up the crop sizes a little bit, but nobody cares because everybody just looks at photos on their phone now. Um, but it just does like that little, little bit of extra. Um, I've gone too far because I did this kind of prior to actually getting in there, but um, I did it with liquify rather than with this. But if you're doing globally across a full gallery, everyone will just appreciate that little, little tiny squeeze. So I think we're done here. Um, now to cut things out, there's a few different ways. I'm going to merge these layers again together. Um, I'm not going to get rid of my work. There's a few different ways you can go about it. Um, the one is the way that I used to do it with like the pen tool, wherever the pen tool is at. It's been a minute since I've done that. And you actually go through and it's the biggest pain. You got to select like by, you can zoom in more and do it. The benefit with a pen tool is that if you, for product maybe, if you want to do like a nice curved line that you just kind of grab it and move like that and make your head a helmet. Um, I'm not going to use pen tool for this because I don't really do that anymore. The next way that I went about it was actually using the magnetic lasso tool, um, which works a little bit better. I feel like it's going to have a struggle here because there's not a whole lot of contrast, but when there are contrast points, you can just kind of do this and like quickly cut out and you can kind of go as fast as you can. And then you can just fix it afterwards. Um, basically you go around your entire subject, you come back down and whenever you get should have stuck to the shirt there and then you just click close. Um, and then you've just selected everything that's within there. The way that I like to do this and the way that may or may not work again, because of how little contrast there is there, um, there is a remove background dot BG, um, this was a free tool for a very, very long time. And then you just upload your image and it was amazing. You'd upload your image and in full res, they would just kick you back. Just you isolated on um, just like a PNG file, which is a transparent background. Um, we'll go through that in a minute. Uh, but you click remove background and you hope and you cross your fingers and you hope that it works. And it works, I would say 98% of the time. Let's see together if this works. Cause every time you click this button, it costs you like, depending on how you buy it, just a couple of cents. But um, that looks pretty dang good. Damn. Okay, that's too <laughs> I made my one eye visibly larger <laughs> than the other eye. So I'm gonna go in and maybe fix that <laughs> real quick because gave myself a little bit of a googly eye. Um, the most ideal would be to go back to the be like to the beginning file and edit again, but I've already spent my like 20 cents or whatever it is to go <laughs> get smaller eye. So also when you do the liquify thing, it looks like uh, in this case specifically, I lost a lot of the sharpness from there too. So maybe be careful if you're using liquify, but I think that looks pretty nice. I'm going to save that as a PNG. 
We're going to come back to that in a minute. Me and Steve, not even grammatically correct. Steve and I, um, myself, one. Also, never call anything final, because if you call it final, you'll be final, underscore, final, underscore, uh, final, 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 um, screw this, whatever. Um, anytime you call something final, it's the curse that it will never be final. Cool. So I'm super happy with that. It did a very fantastic job cutting me out, specifically because, like, one, it, it got, like, somehow all of this detail behind here it knew that that was not my shirt or my pants or, or my life which is very very impressive um there's a little bit of blue light creeping in from this side what i'm actually going to do is if you uh so you're like cool um cut yourself out of the background so it used to look like crap this photo um now now i just live out here in the world of nothing um, so what I want to do, we'll get into this and then we'll get to the next one because the next one I think is going to be a little more for retouching. Uh, we'll do, we'll do yellow for Nikon, Nikon yellow. I don't know what their actual color code is in a ballpark. It say it's about there. If you ever want to just like find an actual color, just copy the, whatever the, the file is in here and then use the eyedropper tool right here and you can just click on anything and it'll just give you the, whatever it is. So for that, um, here's me standing on yellow. Uh, I use command delete to fill that and command delete will whatever your color is back here will fill the canvas with it. Um, I'm gonna move this up and I'm actually gonna auto color again and see if it does a little bit better of a job. I'm happier with that, that's good there. Um, so now you're just floating on a weird yellow backdrop and it looks kind of weird and there's no dimension. Um, to add a floor takes a little bit too much effort and I don't really care to add a floor to this because I don't think this is gonna be an image that I use. Maybe it will be, I don't know, it's kind of nice. I might actually just kind of get all the blue out of um, every where there shouldn't be blue and I'll be maybe using this image. Um, one of the ways that you can add at least some interest to your background is you struggle for a minute and then you find your elliptical marquee tool. I've only been using this program for like 25 years or something. Don't stress me out about it. I don't know where everything is. Everything changes. I start on like Photoshop 3 or something. I'm going to crop in a bit so it's not just me on a huge yellow thing. Or maybe I want it on a huge yellow thing. What do we think? Let's vote now. I'll wait for the comments. I'm kidding. I already recorded this a while ago. You're just seeing it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like a little kind of spot here. So this is kind of emulating in a studio if, if you had a, a light pointed right at the background um, to kind of give a little bit of, I don't know, a, a unique feel or maybe not unique, but a feel to this image. And then because there's a hundred ways to do everything in Photoshop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift command I to invert that. And then I'm going to hit D. So I'm going to reset these to defaults. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. It's the opposite of what I wanted. Something like that. You might be like, wow, that looks really dumb. And it's only going to look dumb for another minute or so. You can also, um, there we go there. And then you can kind of cycle down these. Whoa. Huh? Huh? How about that? Darken. And basically one of these is going to affect it kind of the most to what I want it to look like. And then I'm going to dial it back a lot. I feel like it's probably just going to be one of these multiplies. And then I'm going to bring it back like this. It's fine. If I crop it in, it'll work. Here, well, we'll go, we'll go real deep with the crop all the way, all the way to crop. Bring this down, make myself a little bit larger, right? Looks good. I'm going to get rid of this layer. That was the layer that we just, uh, we did there. And now I'm going to do the same thing, but just right behind me, a bit of an oblong. I'm essentially making just like a vignette here, which is kind of funny because, uh, vignettes have been uh, out for a little while now, but I like them when done nicely. Add that black, come down here, blur that out, give it a minute. A blur is a very intense correction for my computer to do. Something like that looks all right, and then just dial it back a little bit. I feel like the yellow is reacting weird. I feel like that's what it is, so I'm going to blame it on that. Can I do a hue layer? Well, 
I don't know. I don't know. Welcome to watching Taylor fail for a bit and hopefully figuring something out for himself. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think color wise, it's, um, I don't know. It's an interesting image that stands out. It looks like it was shot in a studio. It doesn't look like it was shot in front of a bunch of garbage in my living room and a treadmill and uh, water, water jugs and whatnot. Um, overall, I would say it looks like a pretty good image. There's some other things you can do to it as well. Um, that if you want to get into dodging and burning. So basically you're just adding a little bit extra kind of depth and, um, three dimensionality to your image as you kind of dodge and burn around here. So anything that needs to be a little bit darker that you want to add some natural contrast to, you can, I feel like my shirt overall, it's a little too bright. So you can bring that down. And again, I'm starting to see kind of a lot of blue. So I'm going to see if auto color is going to fix that a little bit. And you can go up here if you're, if you really do want to fix kind of that blue is you can come up here to color balance and you can kind of adjust your white balance this way. And again, you're working with a JPEG, so be cautious of that. Um, but to remove a little bit more of the blue and add a little bit more nice warm skin tone, um, I'm pretty happy with that. So that is how I did that image. I'm gonna save that image, I guess, cause we, we did it. Maybe I'll use it for a thing, who knows? Um, the other, I guess, interesting thing is that you can just now integrate yourself into any scenes that you would like. Leaving that project now, um, let us begin right now, I'm getting my phone. And timer one minute begins right now. So first thing, duplicate this layer. Next thing, come over here, get rid of the under eye bags that I don't want to be 100% in focus. Get rid of both of them. I'm not using my tablet right now, so I'm a little bit slower and less efficient. That's good. Um, flatten that with Command E. Get rid of my little mark there. I think that looks pretty good overall. Come up here, Image Nomic. 31 seconds left. Smoothing normal. Okay. Wait patiently. Up here, Fade Portraiture bit because that's very, very aggressive. Looks good. If you want to do a high pass filter, uh, maybe look that up because you can do a quick little high pass filter here and um, sharpen just the, the specifics that you want. Um, another way to do it is just kind of a little bit of an unsharp layer here. So um, blur. Nope. Sharpen. Unsharp mask. I'm out of time. I've run out of time. I did some extras. I would have been happy with that image as it was, but I thought that I would try to do more than I could. So basically somewhere like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make all of this disappear and then I'm gonna paint back only the details that I want. So in white, I only want to paint basically just the eyes here. And one thing you miss by shooting this in an apartment um, and any other features you wanna paint back are fine too, but I'm pretty happy with that overall, I think. Um, anything else that you would basically simplify out of the room that the, a traditional studio headshot comes from one light. There was one specific catch light in your eye. So if you're doing something like this, you might have to rely a little bit on going a little bit wider and not doing that straight up close, uh, close up. Cause if people start looking at catch lights from there, I'm quite happy with it. But the closer you get, the more you realize that like this dude's just, he's just looking at a window and also it's not quite in focus pro tip, get somebody to take a photo of you so they can actually monitor focus. Um, Easily. So now I am just going to go down here, flatten everything again. Um, some last simple adjustments here. I'm going to dodge just kind of the whites of my eyes a little bit to make them just a little bit more, a little more white. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I don't want to overdo that. That I feel like was too much. Maybe just a small little. Just a little, little touch of that. And then you can whiten teeth as well if you want. So I'll uh, do a little pass of that. You can also do teeth whitening in Photoshop as well. Um, I feel like, or in uh, Lightroom as well. I feel like Lightroom just doing a quick little um, five second, 10 second edit on people's teeth really kind of makes an image stand out a little bit more than it usually would. Um, I'm gonna quickly just get rid of this little dot here. Um, another way that you can do that rather than grabbing, I use the patch tool there and just circled it and it didn't even end up working out. Um, you can make a selection like that and hit shift delete and you can do a content aware fill. So it'll basically just whatever's going on around it. Um, it's incredibly crazy accurate most of the time. So for instance, even if I wanted like this 
weird thing in the background to disappear. And I did a content aware fill on it. 90% of the time it does an amazing job. 10% of the time it's the absolute worst, but I would say that's a good starting point and you can just like kind of get rid of that pretty easily. Um, just with the patch tool, but, um, definitely a super powerful thing. So, um, so now I'm going to do what I did last time because I'm having a bit of a bad skin day. I'm going to select a clean piece of skin, clear, clear patch of skin. I'm going to not duplicate. I'm just going to create a new layer and I'm actually going to, um, kind of just draw on a little bit here of what I want. My computer's real, really struggling to get anything done now because Lightroom's probably open. Lightroom actually crippled my computer so hard that it, stopped quick time from writing the file even though it said it was still recording so um, always be sure when you're doing processor intensive tasks when you don't need Lightroom open to close it so what I did there was I just added a little bit of uh, filter to my skin um, that was the last thing you saw and now it's just cut out I just again use this little uh, remove background tool and if you do want to get this remove background.bg tool uh, use the link in the description because you get a bonus one use of it. Um, so you get one free one for signing up and then you get one free one for signing up with my link. And then I also in return get a free one, but it's a pretty cool program. And right now, at least in my searching, let me know if I'm wrong, but, um, I could not find any sort of competitor product that was priced differently. Cause it's a weird subscription model where you buy credits to do the thing. And it, when you click remove background, it uploads it. So it's not even hosted on your computer. It's a bit of a weird system, but it works and it makes my life a lot happier. So, um, yeah, going into, I guess a few of the last ones here, these are, uh, I'm just going to grab some images from unsplash and there's just like a bunch of different versions of whatever you can use. So depending on what use your project is, um, you can just find backgrounds where you can find colors like we did in the first place. Um, and if you're doing something that's just like a straight up backdrop, usually you can just do, you can either do a lens blur or you can just do a kind of a blur like that just to make it se seamlessly integrate a little bit better. Um, although it never will be seamless and that's why I like shooting images a little more ambiently lit because they better mask in different situations rather than just like looking completely out of place like this kind of does. It looks like a studio shot shot in front of a beautiful landscape and may maybe you have a team to go out and do that but I think a lot of people are going to go see through it and they're going to see that you just replace the background with something that you found on Unsplash. So shout out to uh, Lorena, Lara um, for providing this beautiful background image. And, uh, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me here on this adventure of taking headshots in my house. And it ended up taking all day with the edit and everything. Uh, we enjoyed some pizza together. That was very nice. And if you're interested in the presets, they are either standalone or you can join Patreon and get everything. Um, if you're a wedding photographer specifically, Patreon's awesome because there's just a ton of content up there and there's more and more courses going up every single month. So join up there if you're interested. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's cool too subscribe on youtube we can hang out we can we can be friends here uh nikon show starts tomorrow so come back on monday and watch and share that because uh, i hope that people share it and i hope that people like it um we think we did a good thing we think it's interesting we think it's something that hasn't been done yet on youtube so hopefully you agree and uh, i will see you then i suppose